we introduced Unite Technology with this release. And um, Unite Technology, first of all, uh, gives our customers the ability to um, import all the major non-PTC 3D CAD formats into Creo with no additional software to install and no patting of the head or rubbing of the tummy and no licenses from our competitors required either. You just get it. And if you're on, if you're on support, you get it in every seat of Creo. You don't have to pay extra for it. As long as you're on support, you get it. That's really, really interesting. But what really unlocks some serious potential for our customers is that three, three key formats, CATIA NX and SOLIDWORKS, Unite also gives our customers the ability to open those into Creo. The reason open is important is because you can bring the data into Creo without burdening the business with the creation of any new business objects. So you can imagine a scenario where a design engineer is trying to work on a design project. They're trying to bring data in from another design. They really need to sort of modify one piece of that data for purposes of bringing it forward. But in order to do the design change properly, they need the design context, right? So they need to bring in like a 100-part assembly to make a change to one part. But with import technology, if that's a scenario you're in with import technology, you've burdened the business with moving 100 business objects to Creo. They've got 100 new business objects to manage. And all he, had to, all he really wanted to do was make a design change to one part. With Creo 3, our customers can open that model directly into Creo. No new business objects are created. And when the design engineer goes to touch that one object to change it, Creo will say, time out. You don't own that object. Do you want to convert that object? to a Creo object. At which point in time the design engineer can say, no, I don't want to. Let me go talk to the owner who still owns that that's working in, say, SolidWorks or whatever. Or the design engineer can say, yes, I'm going to use direct modeling technology to modify this object. We will convert that on the fly right in the Creo session. We'll convert the owning assembly as well because that changed too, right? And now they're done. So maybe you converted two business objects instead of 100. So for consolidation, we think this is an extremely efficient approach. Every time, a, every time the customer wants to take a look at an assembly to consider whether to bring that forward, in Creo they can just open it, they can leave it alone, never have to do anything, no new business objects are being managed in Windchill, no new objects are created in Creo, you're still using the original objects, and only when the time comes for you to decide to change something do you actually have to do a conversion to Creo. Right? So it's very, very efficient. And, and by the way, that open capability, also free if you're on support for our customers. And the conversion on demand, free for our customers if they're on support. So we're trying to make it as easy as possible for customers that are active with us, that are on support, to consolidate onto Creo. So that's one big piece of the Unite technology. The second big piece is using that same open capability, but for collaboration. In Creo today, we're really, really good at allowing customers to build um, dependencies in the assembly from one design to another. Think about a top-down design scenario, right? You've got a design model that's managing all your interfaces and you're, you're creating all sorts of relationships across the assembly. We're good at that. We're really good at assembly management, assembly referencing. We're really good at it. And it's, important, it's an important design tool for doing design properly. Well, customers never do it when the other design is not Creo, right? They never do it. And the reason they don't do it is because anytime you bring third-party CAD data into Creo, until Creo 3, that is, you're creating a new object. It's disconnected from the original object. If you start doing design around that, and then that design changes, you've got to go redo all that work, right? It's a big pain in the neck. So what, act, what our customers actually do is they tell their suppliers and partners that are not using Creo, they say, you guys need to get done with your design before we'll start doing our design. What does that do? That extends the product development cycle, right? It, it ca causes everything to happen much, it takes a lot more time for everything to happen. So we've introduced with Unite Technology not only the ability to open these objects directly in Creo, but to keep them up to date dynamically, automatically. In Creo today, we have this concept. In Creo 2 today, we have this concept that if your object is out of date, if Windchill, if you suddenly realize your object's out of date, someone else has checked in a new version of an object you have in your session, you can dynamically replace that in session. We've been able to do that in Creo for a long time with Windchill. In Creo 3.0 and Windchill 10.2, you'll be able to do the same thing with CATIA, NX, SOLIDWORKS, and Creo. 
same work process, same workflow. In fact, in Windchill 10.2 and Creo 3, we will proactively notify the design engineer that his objects are out of date. And then with a click of a button, you can update all of those objects in session from Windchill. That's interesting, but we actually take it one step further and we were smart about how we bring that geometry into Creo from these foreign systems. You can actually build design dependencies across platforms. So what I showed today in my session is a design scenario where the design, we, we, I showed a big truck. I won't mention the brand, it's one of our customers. And uh, that truck was designed mainly in Creo. Cab was designed in Katia. Fuel tank was designed in SolidWorks. The design engineer had to design the mounting brackets for the fuel tank. So he did some initial sort of basic shapes of design brackets. He didn't know what the new tank was going to look like yet. Finally got the tank in, was able to finish the design of the brackets using surfaces from the SolidWorks object to shape the surfaces of the brackets in Creo. Then from there he can build drawings off of that, build downstream simulations off of that with confidence because when that object updated, the Creo object updated automatically. When a new SolidWorks version came in, the Creo object updated just like the dependency was from one Creo model to another. This dependency from the SolidWorks object to the Creo object just as robust because we brought that object into Creo and we're managing dependencies with the same technology we manage dependencies between Creo with. At least at the geometry level. We don't have feature dependencies, but at the geometry level, we're managing the dependencies just as robustly. So you get some really, really compelling collaboration capabilities with suppliers and partners that are not using the same CAD system that you are using Creo because of the ability to open that model and have it live inside Creo and have those changes come into Creo automatically. So that's the big headline stuff, right? That's Unite Technology. A lot of our competitors have import. None of them have open. None of them are doing this kind of thing with collaboration and consolidation. This open technology really makes it interesting and compelling. Um, the collaboration stuff, the automatic updates, that is a paid extension. There's one for each of the formats, CATIA, SOLIDWORKS, and NX. That's a, that's, that's a paid extension. We have had collaboration extensions in the past. They were called something else for CATIA and NX, and those will carry forward into Creo. They get new names, but customers that have those will get the new functionality as long as they keep paying their maintenance on that. They, they get it. The SOLIDWORKS one is brand new. That's a brand new collaboration extension. Concept design is the second big theme in Creo 3. It's no secret we've been talking about concept design for a while now. Creo 1, Creo 2, we talked about concept design. It's another big area. We've improved our concept design tools and managed to still keep you know, interoperability a core tenant of the process, right? 100% of what you do in the concept design phase is compatible with the rest of the Creo platform. You never lose any design intent. There's four key areas where we've done work in concept design. We've done some great work in freestyle. So freestyle is this freeform surfacing we have in Creo Parametric. We've now added the ability to control the boundaries of a freestyle surface parametrically. So you can like align the edges of a freestyle feature to like an ISDX based curve or to a sketch or to another surface in the model and actually tell it to be tangent or to be normal or whatever. So that way you can imagine a freeform surface its boundaries regenerating and the freeform surface updating to, to still maintain tangency and so forth, but staying freeform in between. Really, really nice stuff. Creo layout um, improves in scalability. We've added the ability to break your layout down into what we call sub layouts. So you can imagine a, keep people, when they first got layouts, started to bring in just massive 2D layouts into Creo layout, massive. And we couldn't handle them. And we said, we need a way of handling this. And so what we found is that most of the time they have like a master layout, but they take pieces of it and they work on pieces of it in phases. And so we're introducing this concept of sub layouts. So you can take, you can basically handle like five or six times as much data in layout today than you could in Creo 2, simply because you can take one of these massive layouts and break it up into small pieces. And then take those pieces and work on them as sub designs. Think of it as an assembly structure works under the hood exactly like an assembly structure. You have these layouts reporting into a master layout just like an assembly of parts report into a master assembly. It works the same way. And with that, we've introduced some new 3D integration technology so that as you start building 3D geometry off of the 2D layouts and you get these really complicated hierarchical assemblies, we're giving the 3D user really deep insight into exactly what's changed in 2D, like down to the entity level. They can see individual entities, what has changed. Whereas in Creo 2, 
It's like a copy jam, publish jam relationship, right? You just hit the button, it updates, and you're like, what just happened? In Creo 3, you know before you accept any changes that come into 3D, exactly what entities have changed. Right, right down to the individual, I mean like the individual curves. Like radius, line segments, right down to the individual entity. The, the 3D design engineer can see everything before he accepts a change. Creo Direct gets a lot more mature for concept design. You guys all know the strategy is to bring Creo Elements Direct technology onto the Creo platform. That's been the strategy, stated strategy all along. We've made really good progress there. It's still not quite ready to be considered an engineering tool to build products from the beginning to end, but it's gotten a lot more mature. It's a really, really good product, and uh, we're excited about what it's done. We've actually got technology in Creo Direct today in Creo 3.0 that's actually better in some areas than technology that's on Elements Direct. Some technology has actually started to get better because the, we're using the Creo Geometry Engine, right? So we're starting to leverage some stuff the Creo Geometry Engine is able to do that the Elements Direct Geometry Engine was never able to do. So we're, we're, we're making some progress there, but honestly, we've still got a lot of work to go there. And then last but not least, we've introduced, we've introduced a new extension in Creo Parametric called the Design Exploration Extension, okay? This extension gives the Creo Parametric user the ability to build a design space on their desktop, arbitrarily wide and deep design space of, we call them checkpoints. They start doing a certain amount of work, they like what they have, they, they want to maybe back up and go another way or they want to branch off of there, they save a checkpoint and they can start branching. And building checkpoints off of checkpoints as deep and as wide as they want. It's uh, kind of think of it as a sandbox for the design engineer. It, you can imagine a couple different use cases. Think of the situation where I want to explore a bunch of different design concepts for a new camera design or a new chair design or whatever. Or, you know, there's 12 ways to model this thing in Creo. I'm not exactly sure what the best modeling technique would be to model this change I want to make in Creo. So I'm actually going to build a design space where I start down one modeling path. I'm not sure if this is good. I'm going to back up, go down another modeling path. Then I get to one point, I'm going to branch off of there and do another mod. You, there's a hierarchical tree built right into the Creo UI that shows you what, what design branches are related to one another. At any one time, you can click on any leaf on the tree and say activate and immediately go to that branch. We, we, uh, we keep track of everything about the whole design space for you. What models you used, what changes you made in between design, bran in between design branches or, or between checkpoints and we save only the incremental information, so it's actually very, very lightweight. Very, very powerful stuff. The other use case that, <laughs> frankly, our, our parametric users love the most is uh, <clears throat> the situation where a change has occurred. PDM change, copy geom change, top-down design change, whatever. A change has occurred, and when they click the button to regenerate and their model blows up, and they can't go back, they're stuck for hours trying to fix that change, it creates all kinds of havoc. With design expiration extension, you can temporarily accept changes that have occurred from the outside world. Build the design expiration session around a change that's occurred from the outside world, temporarily accept it, and then investigate the ramifications of that change safely in the design expiration extension session work it all out, talk to the design engineer who made the change, and say, we can't do this, and here's why. I looked at the, without, if you don't like it, you click no, or you click the X, and it undoes the whole thing, and you're not committed to the change at all. Right? I actually showed that today in my, in my video. Really, this is the one that, I love the branching idea, but the design engineers just love the idea of being able to sort of, just sort of investigate whether or not this change is a good idea or not, and always go back if they need to. They love that, because parametric modeling can be a bear to work on. Yeah, they love that idea. I mean, I, I mean, the video I showed focused on exploring multiple design concepts in a branching design space, because that's like really cool to talk about. But like practically speaking, design engineers just love it, because they have control over how changes come into their session now. It, they, they love it. And we, we also have this preview capability where you can you, you click a button that says show differences. And before you even accept the change, you can see the old geometry and the new geometry side by side or sitting right on top of one another. And you can isolate just what's changed, what's new, that kind of thing, and kind of get an idea. Is this going to be good or bad? But even then, you can say, oh, I'm not so sure I want to enter a design expiration extension session. It'll apply the change, and then you can see how many features fail.
but that regeneration is isolated to the session, not to the main session. It's isolated to your exploration environment. So it's pretty sweet stuff. These design spaces are going to be really, really valuable for our customers, right? You create one of these design spaces that could have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 checkpoints in it. There's a lot of IP in that design space. You evaluated a lot of different concepts. You can save them and go back to them later. So when you check, when you find, let's say you pick checkpoint 35 and you say, that's the final design I want. I'm going to check that one back in the windshield. The design space is not lost. At any time, you can take the entire design space and say, I want to save that. You save it to a, an encrypted, zipped file. And then when you check in your next version of the design, you check in the design space as a secondary object as part of the check-in. And that saves it in Windchill so that any time you want to go back, you can go back and unwind that entire design space. Design Exploration Extension works in any mode of Creo Parametric. Assembly mode, part mode, sheet metal, mechanisms. It, it, you can bring in new, uh, new parts. You can bring in a part, swap it for another part. So the last major theme was productivity improvements. And that's, I mean, we frankly have, you know, a huge amount of productivity improvements across all the apps. We change our graphics infrastructure so that you can now, you can now do very, very realistic materials in the design environment in Creo. So like re eight real HDR environments, real reflections in the models, real bump mapping of, of textures, like, like a texture like this table on the model, but all done in the graphics card so it doesn't burden the CPU. The architecture does not change performance one iota because it's all done on the graphics card. Really, really nice. Right? We're very, very tight partnering with, with NVIDIA and with, uh, with the AMD guys, the ATI guys. It's, it's really, really well done. So you, don't, you get a nice, realistic view of your model without sacrificing the CPU time you need to do regeneration and that kind of thing. Really sweet. Last year, we announced support for virtualization with Citrix. This year, we're announcing that we're expanding that. Citrix has a, a new technology stack that they've come out with since the two events that allows you to virtualize the GPU. So what that means is multiple Creo sessions can share the same GPU. Yeah, so you, this is powerful because some of these high-end graphics cards from NVIDIA, they're like $10,000, but they got, enough, they got enough processing power to do like four or five or six worth of GPUs for what's, what's in my laptop. Like, they're that good. And so the virtualization value proposition changes because now you can run maybe four or five or six Creo sessions off of a single server rack instance of, on, on a server and virtualize that out to four or five or six clients off of one GPU. In one rack, you know. So it's virtualization has always been cool. We have customers that are doing it with a one-to-one -one relationship, and now that we've certified in this new technology stack from Creo, they can do it in a one-to-many. You know, it's all dependent upon how much GPU time. It doesn't dynamically allocate resources, unfortunately. You kind of have to set it up ahead of time. But you know, even a one-to-four value proposition is a huge change. It is GPU technology agnostic. The Citrix, the Citrix technology does not require a particular GPU type. We have particular configurations that we've certified that we keep in-house. So if a customer has a problem that is related to the platform, we can reproduce it in-house and, and help them solve their problem. 303 is Unite Technology. 303 is all about our multi-CAD story. You might remember back when we were in the castle announcing Creo. You remember the four big unsolved problems? The fourth one that we have not made much progress on was any data adoption. This is the any data adoption release. We're not using that language anymore, but that's what this release is. This is that release, right? This is, this is the fourth of those four pillars. In the US, more than 70% of people have adopted Creo. So, but worldwide, we're, we're over 60%. We're feeling pretty comfortable, considering we're at like 60%, we're midway through the year. Feeling pretty comfortable, we'll be at more than 75% by the end of the year.